Hello everyone, this is Bodyguard Binks and welcome to the finale episode of 999. This is it. We're finally going to get the true ending of the game. So in the last episode, a lot of interesting information was being thrown about, about why Ace did that and Ace killed this person and that person in that way. And it was all Zero's fault, really. And we thought that Santa was Zero, but he's not? So, yeah. So let's get started with this ending. Oh, man, I'm so excited. <clears throat> he knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the Morphic Field set. Uh, who's talking? It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures, then? Imagine a river that splits in two, like an upside-down Y. This looks familiar <laughs> from uh, Zero Time Dilemma. <laughs> the river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river's source in the past will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. Uh, this is a little strange. <laughs> but I am also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. You're negative one. <laughs> Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. That's strange. Where? Where did she go? June. No, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh, shit. What? Did he grab the gun again? I'm so confused. Freeze. Oh. Santa's got the gun. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Yeah, you jerk. Get up. Ooh. Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... What's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any numbered doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? What the hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out. <gasps> he just abandoned them in there? What the hell? And now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. 
At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be all right. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. Damn. Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. You mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Oh, but he is. Shit, we've got to do something. Maybe we can still get out through door nine. There's the red. Nope. I already know because of the puzzle I did before that you guys could get through door eight, but not door nine. Oh, no. Yeah, all right, we can do this. I've just got to... No, it's not going to work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. Yep. Yeah. Just like I said from that puzzle. It already was pretty much telling me this. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Yeah, I'm the type who likes to write things down, too. <laughs> Helps me think. Sure, why not? I don't think I'm going to need them. Ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Huh. Oh, man, she doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, no need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez, <laughs> you just said you don't need it. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that. Alright, at least Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Ah, we would have to leave Lotus behind. That's not good. Well, I don't know. Shit. Then there's no other way. Lotus. She looks calm. Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. Damn it, you idiot. Don't you know I love you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I shit them so hard. I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without... Uh, if you're not... Look, it'd be bad, alright? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. If there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> I can't believe he just called her that. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of true, but... What that has nothing to do with your job, sir? <laughs> He could just be up front. Well, in this timeline, I don't think he knows about um, her kids and her name and all that, so he can't say, oh, you can't abandon your kids. <sighs> Sorry. Had to uh, fix my headset. It's been bothering me a lot. A lot. <clears throat> huh? Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven? He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You don't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Ugh, you're all idiots. 
Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However... I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? Because of what happened earlier? Yep. I trust you remember what happened to Ace. I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is this? Why? The digital root should be nine. It has to be nine. Then why? Why isn't it opening? Just to see, why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Mm-hmm. Yep. You were right! It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. The walls are way too high, and there's no way in hell we could get to that hole Seven popped out of nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at this door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. No! I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. This is kind of creepy. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. Is this Junpei again? I'm kind of confused. I think so. No, it is her. Or this person. <laughs> I'm guessing, I mean, based on everything, it seems like it's Akane, but we're not sure right now. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him, and we became one, inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. I probably should be reading this as a younger version, but, uh... Not unless she's talking. Like, talking, talking. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Which is strange. <laughs> Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Aw, there's more kids now. Interesting. Come on! Over here! That was my brother, Aoi. He was screaming. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. 
Come on! Hurry up! We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got into a fist fight. A girl was watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. Really? It has been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, light started talking. He was blind. Ah, nine years later, we would call him Snake. His name is Light. Interesting, considering he's blind. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Yes, could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. That's, I don't, that's kind of why I gave him a British accent, just because of his personality. I don't know. The fight died down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. Aww. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. Oh, I get it now. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. That is so hard to find, by the way. <laughs> I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. And I find it interesting that her real name is Clover. So she actually went by her real name. And her number was four, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. Wow, for you to find them must have been really hard then. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me, and I hoped that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love. And we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Very familiar terms to us when we spoke to uh, Santa or Aoi back when uh, we were in, uh, we went through door four and the whole uh, bookmark of the four leaf clover thing. Those were the things he said he hated. And uh, considering this and the circumstances, it kind of makes sense now. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So, if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one, too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now, don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a, little, a while longer and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found a, no a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. See, a bunch of kids did this game so much better than we did. 
So much less drama. No one's dead. Well, until the end, of course. Oh, this is terrible. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we going to do? There aren't any other doors? We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already... Uh-oh. <sighs> Damn it, Ace. Warning! Warning! Emergency Incineration Command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat, Emergency Incineration Command has been acknowledged. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother and Aoi swallowed hard and answered. Er, my brother Aoi. <laughs> I think it means this room is gonna burn. Oh no. Burn? The plaque on the door says incinerator. And that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then... There he was! Our hero! <clears throat> High up on the wall, a door opened, and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent, away from the incinerator, and slid down into the hall. We came out on the other side of door 9. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the st spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Then how did you fall behind? I'm kind of confused. Behind me were Nona. Ah, we finally know her name. Sounds familiar, right? We know who that is. That is Lotus's daughter. One of them, at least. Behind me were Nona, my brother Aoi, Snake, or Light, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door 9 before us, were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... Oh no! Where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I'd had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, had I dropped it as we slid out? Oh no. No... Don't go back. I know it means something to you, but come on. Ugh. Oh, man. I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me. I was sure of that. Because it's common sense. Oh, my gosh. She's a child. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. 
I ran to the central hall. The room that connected all the other areas of the ship. I'm confused because weren't you on stairs? In front of them? How does that work? And hid in the shadows. And moments later I felt a run of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. Oh. So there was a way for her to exit off the stairs at some point. Ugh. I waited until they were out of sight. And then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. Oh, man, she brought this on herself. Uh, of course she wouldn't know that this would happen, but still. Darn it, girl! I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I thought it'd be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back toward the stairs and freedom... Uh-oh. No. The door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. And normally this is where I would leave it, but we're going to finish this game today. Let's keep going. <clears throat> it was Hongo. Gentaru Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Ah, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. Ah, uh, his smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No! I don't want to! Let me go! Please, let go of me! I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, damn it! Do as I tell you! He heaved on my arm trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! Then, suddenly, Akane! The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt toward Hongo. You came back! I cried out. Ha! Huh, you're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number nine door. Sometimes I wish, man, if I lived alone, or if my room was like, you know, soundproof, I would be able to really voice act and scream when they scream. <laughs> but I can't, so. Pitiful screams. Sorry. <clears throat> Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. But those fists never reached Hongo. Dang. That sucks. With a cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Yeah, well, even with his disease, I mean, he's, he's an ass. He's a total ass. <clears throat> then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. 
He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asters asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all, and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... Oh. I'm sure if she tried to follow him, he would have just pushed her down again. The double door slid shut as well. Dang him. But that part with the bracelets... Hmm. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. What? Then it started again. Warning, warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Ah, notice how the top screen came back now. Interesting. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. I'm pretty sure the one on top is Junpei. Shit. Man, I knew what was that uh I knew what it was gonna say, but that is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it It's starting. Interesting. So now it makes you think. The fact that the top screen is Junpei and the bottom is Akane. Huh. Very interesting game. I like that a lot. Nice touch. <clears throat> Santa started the incinerator. Fuck. Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again. After nine years. Ooh, boy. What the hell? What. The. Hell. What are you talking about? It's nine years this, and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments? Oh yeah, she doesn't really know what's going on. What in God's name are you talking about? You aren't making any sense. Somebody fill her in, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have the time to explain it right now. I promise I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... Lady, come on now. We don't have time for this. Automatic incineration will take place in 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn. What kind of an idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well... Damn it. Okay, okay, fine. I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven... Figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing. How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There. Oops, sorry. Almost did a <laughs> ace voice. Why? Why did I do that? I, I have no idea. <clears throat> there isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it. Nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. Well, this is new. Very, very new. <clears throat> what else can I say about it but... 
What the hell is that? What else could I say but... Oh, it's her now. <clears throat> what else could I say but... What is that? The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, and a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off, even as more took their place, and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. Oh, poor little Wakane. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. Oh, interesting. All I can see on this screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's going to be okay. Gah! Man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Automatic incineration will take place in 15 minutes. All right, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's got to be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey, move! Gah! Hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you get to shove people around. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. This is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Yeah, she's the computer person, so... Sure, just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... Ah. Huh. Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What the hell? It looks like some sort of puzzle. It's Sudoku, people. Sudoku! Which has been very popular in the past, I don't know, couple years or so? I, I remember I was suddenly seeing it everywhere. <laughs> it's got a bunch of numbers scattered across a 9 by 9 grid. The numbers range from 1 to 9. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle... The incinerator will stop. Yeah, well, we can hope, right? Alright, puzzle. How do you work? Ah, oh, man, that damn voice again. Automatic incineration will take place in 13 minutes. Shit. 13 minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's going to pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but... I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. Oh, interesting. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any, any more information from him. I felt the sickens tick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Oh, that was Ace. Dang it. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening, evil face. Frickin' psycho. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Oh, I don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really, but I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> his laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! 
Oh my, how could you call a gentleman such a mus as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. Yes, you do, a-hole. You see, I've even left you a way out. But you fool! You are doing this to the one girl who doesn't have her brother on the other side. So stupid. Uh, a way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness. Haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Hmm? If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Yep, before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now, there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? See, he knows who it is. That's why it's so stupid. I looked down at my left hand. A face on my bracelet showed a five. Ah, so he has a five as well. Interesting. Yep. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. Hmm. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hungo's muffled voice from across the room. I already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of a fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? Hm. <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now, start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't. Then you'll die. You'll burn alive. <laughs> it's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it will be very painful. Oh, you psycho. <laughs> Okay, no more evil laughing, please. His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Automatic incineration will take place in ten minutes. I was crying. Great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow, I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the empty monitor. I can't. I just can't. There's no... no way. I can't figure this out. Yeah, to people who don't understand Sudoku, this will be, like, totally confusing, you know? What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know! I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts, and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating, and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. 
My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself to pieces. Oh, man. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Wow, she really has this connection with him. Help me, Jumpy. Help me. Help me. Help me. Jumpy! 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 Please. Help me. Jumpy. Akane. Akane. Who the hell is Akane? Shut up. Just shut the hell up. Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me. And I think Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here. Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck. Did something break our connection? So he really understands what's going on now. Interesting. I swear I just heard her. Shit. Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy? I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I screamed as loud as I could. Immediately, I heard him call back. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. Then that means... Akane, are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am. How? How did you know? Because you're so connected. Aww. Now I understand what Santa meant. Right, there's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister to save Akane. I think I get it now. Okay, incineration will take place in seven minutes. Jumpy! We don't have time! As quickly as I could, I told- Oh, it's her, sorry. <laughs> as quickly as I t could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it. And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the Nonary game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane. No kidding. I... I can't believe it. But there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. Interesting. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her, no matter what. Alright, incineration in six minutes. Jumpy? Yeah, I know. Just hang on, alright? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, alright? Just give me a few minutes. Okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. 
Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. It's kind of strange because of the age difference, but, you know, love is love, and he loves older version of her, she loves younger version of him. Same people. No big deal, right? <laughs> kind of, it's actually really romantic. <laughs> Alright, time to get to work, Junpei. Is Snake talking to them about something? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. Get out of my way. H hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over this grid. Now, if I'm looking at this right... I'm going to need to fill in all the empty squares with other numbers from 1 to 9. But I can't use the same two numbers in any horizontal or vertical row. The same has to go for the 3x3 three three square with the thick lines around them. That means I need to put in different numbers in the horizontal and vertical rows as well as the 3x3 by the, the three by three spaces. I think that's the rule here. Alright, bring it on. I'm going to do this on my own. With my own mind. Uh-huh. I'm going to solve this problem. And he says it that way because all of this time, Akane's been the one solving all the puzzles. Which is so strange. And look at how they're doing that. Oh, that's so weird. I can do that this way. Thank goodness for doing this. Otherwise, I, w I mean, if I was playing on an um, actual DS, I would have to just flip it over, but still. <laughs> Alrighty then. Thank goodness for that. <clears throat> so guys, I will be back with you once I solve this. I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. 